I'm Stuart McIntosh with the BBC News. Hello. Demonstrators have been setting up tents outside the Israeli parliament in Jerusalem as part of a last-ditch attempt to halt the government's planned reform of the judiciary. Ministers say the reforms are needed to curb judicial overreach, but opponents say they're being rushed through parliament. Here's Sebastian Usher. This is now the 29th week of these protests against the planned judicial overhaul. So the momentum has been really building up. And this is very much because this is a crunch moment now. The Knesset is due to begin a debate on Sunday, which will lead to the final votes on Monday, the second and third vote for the first bill. Thousands of people have been evacuated from homes and hotels on the Greek island of Rhodes to escape raging wildfires amidst a heat wave in Europe. Around 2,000 had to be ferried off beaches, assisted by private boats. The fires, fanned by strong winds, have destroyed a huge forested area and are now almost at the seafront. Azadeh Mashiri reports. Helicopters flying over the beaches and into the thick smoke. Large crowds of tourists have fled their resorts and locals their own villages as the blaze engulfed parts of the island. Rhodes has been burning for five days and the flames are said to be out of control. Officials say they have moved thousands threatened by the wildfires to gyms, schools and hotel conference centres to stay overnight. Officials in Canada say the heaviest rains to hit the Atlantic region in 40 years have triggered floods that have left thousands of homes without electricity. Police reported that four people were missing, including two children, who were in a car that was submerged. The Premier of Nova Scotia, Tim Houston, said 25 centimetres of rain had fallen in less than 24 hours and he's declared a state of emergency in several areas of the province. The leader of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, has arrived in St Petersburg, where he'll hold talks with President Putin on Sunday. It's their first meeting since Mr Lukashenko helped end last month's mutiny by the Wagner private army and welcomed both the group's leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, and some of its troops. Their talks will be dominated by the war in Ukraine, where Russian forces have been resisting a counter-offensive by Kiev. Cambodians go to the polls shortly in a general election that observers have deemed a sham. The main opposition party has been banned and many of its leaders jailed or forced into exile, leaving the way clear for Prime Minister Hun Sen to extend his 38 years in office. But the coming term could be the last for one of the world's longest-serving political leaders. In a recent TV interview, he said he was ready for a transfer of power. World News from the BBC. Mali's military leaders have promulgated a new constitution. It gives the office of president new powers and enhances the status of the military. The opposition has denounced the reforms. Julian Bedford reports. The new constitution was given the overwhelming backing of Malians in a referendum, albeit one that few voted on. The head of the military government, Colonel Asimi Goita, says it's needed to better combat the Islamist insurgency that has riven the country for the past decade. But like other recent moves, including the expulsion of French and UN peacekeeping forces, it also cedes more power to Colonel Goita, who in the two years he's led the country has done little to drive back the jihadists. Thousands of Iraqis have joined demonstrations in Baghdad, sparked by the burning or damaging of the Koran during recent anti-Islam protests in Sweden and Denmark. Saturday's rallies were called by ruling Iraqi parties and armed groups, many of them close to Iran. The Czech government has reacted angrily to assertions by Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban that it sided with what he terms as federalists in the European Union. In a speech outlining his policy priorities, Mr Orban alleged that Federalists were attacking the traditions and sovereignty of the Visegrad group, comprising the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland and Hungary. Police in Mexico have detained a man in connection with an arson attack on a bar in the northern state of Sonora that killed 11 people and injured several more. Authorities in the city of San Luis Rio, Colorado close to the US border, said a drunk young man had allegedly thrown a flaming object into the building after earlier being ejected for harassing several women. That's the BBC News.